Gadgets Field Trip. We're going on a visit. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Come on, let's go with him. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. What's that you ask? What is it? Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Well, no one wants to miss it. of the United States, Washington, D.C. According to my keen detective sense, you'd better brace yourself for a bumpy ride as we take off to explore some of the very first flying machines and spaceships. Go, go, Gadget, far out field trip. Washington, D.C. is up to its monumental elbows in monuments and museums, including one dedicated to flying. Let's zoom in and take a look. This is the National Air and Space Museum. This museum has everything you'd want to know about flying, and a lot that you don't have the nerve to ask. flying stuff gets started. I thought you'd never ask. The Wright brothers? That's what most people think. But actually, people have flitted, fluttered, and fallen for hundreds of years in an attempt to make like a jet and take off. or the Lilienthal 1894 glider. Otto Lilienthal's idea of a good time was standing around at the top of a hill waiting for a good gust of wind. Then he'd run down the hill with the bat-like apparatus strapped to his back until he gained enough speed for the wind to lift him into the air. From 1891 to 1896, he made over 2,000 flights. Some as far as 300 feet. Once it was proven that air really could support man, the next step was to find a way to power these planes. The Langley Air Drone No. 5 was the first unmanned heavier-than-air plane. It was kind of like a glider with a steam engine. Samuel Pierpoint Langley launched the aerodrome number five off a houseboat with a catapult and landed it in the Potomac River, which was lucky because it didn't have landing gear. Langley made quite a splash in the world of aviation. On December 17, 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright changed the world when Orville went up in their aircraft for the first successful flight ever. With Orville Wright as pilot, the airplane took off from a launching rail. It flew for 12 seconds at a distance of 120 feet. Their flight was the beginning of the future. Not bad for a couple of guys who started out as bicycle mechanics. After the 
this landmark flight, there was no stopping pilots of any age, size, shape, or country. the Bleriot Type 11 was flown by Frenchman Louis Bleriot across the English Channel. Guess it beats swimming. And now it's time for a field trip quiz. True or false? Orville and Wilma Wright named their plane Kitty Hawk. Drum roll, please. The answer is false. The Wright brothers call their plane the Flyer. Kitty Hawk is the name of the town in North Carolina where the plane was flown. The National Air and Space Museum's collection of historic aerospace material is undoubtedly the largest of its kind in the world. It contains trailblazing American aircraft and spacecraft. Let's take a look at more of these incredible flying machines. That's the spirit of St. Louis. In 1919, a wealthy businessman offered a $25,000 prize for the first person to successfully complete a non-stop flight between New York and Paris. Finally, on May 20th, 1927, 25-year-old Charles Lindbergh flew this very plane across the Atlantic Ocean. The flight was 3,610 miles long and took 33 and a half hours to complete. And he did it the hard way. All alone, no sleep, no movies, no little meals on plastic trays. Collecting the prize was a lot easier. The Polar Star was the first plane to successfully fly over the entire continent of Antarctica in 1935. Guess if you only made it over part of Antarctica, you should have packed a dog sled in the cargo hold. This cheery yellow aircraft, the Grumman Goose, built in 1937, was among the first amphibian planes, meaning they could land on either water or solid ground. Wonder if it can swim and flap its wings at the same time. With everybody flying, the next generation of fearless pilots took to the skies to set new records of speed, distance, and altitude challenging the forces of gravity, pushing the outside of the envelope, tempting the specter of fate, and what? Chuck Yeager was an outstanding World War II flying ace who went on to become a flight instructor and test pilot. On October 14, 1947, he became the first person ever to fly faster than the speed of sound. He did it in an experimental X-1 plane called the Glamorous Glennis. He was very excited, but it took an hour for his voice to catch up with him to say, Wow, that was some flight. Having cluttered all the airways, there was only one way to go, farther up, beyond the Earth's atmosphere, into space.
charting new destinations, expanding our knowledge of the entire universe, going where man has never gone before, with the keys to my gadget mobile. We landed with Lucky Lindy, broke the sound barrier with Chuck Yeager, and tiptoed through the moon rocks. Thanks for flying along. Join us next time when we blast off for another fun-filled adventure. Go, go, gadget field trip. <laughs> Peek.